and everybody, FSC Trucking. We are on our way. Oh, crap, my pocket. We are on our way down the street over by the airport Fond du Lac. Over to Wausau. We're picking up some kind of chassis, like a truck chassis. Going to St. Paul, snow roll equipment. Hit that like and subscribe. Always forget to ask. Well, we don't have far to go. We're basically in Fond du Lac now. Just got up this morning and a quick trip. All the cars are parked here because the quick trips are rapidly becoming uh, drop lots for local truck drivers to go to work. They can use the quick trips as drop lots and the people that are passing through are running out of parking spaces. But there was one or two of them available last night, so I guess it's okay. But if there was a car parked in a truck stall and, and I needed to go to bed last night, I'd have just parked in front of the car. I don't know what do you do. I, I lived that life once, you know, when you, you got to go home, you know, where do you park your truck to go home, you know, when you live in a neighborhood that won't allow you to bring your, you know, bring your bobtail home, what do you do? But all the same time, the truck stop, not a drop lot. coming back except the big major East Coast port strike is is on so Tuesday was its first day Monday night into Tuesday midnight's when it started today is Thursday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Tuesday day three of it 
So I had a mixer wagon that's down at Sparrows Point and same longshoremen work there, work at the, uh, you know, Dundalk, Maryland. It was out in Baltimore is what it was. The big ports we go to in Baltimore, like Dundalk, Seager. I, I very rarely ever go to Seager. It's more of a container ship place, but Seager is one. And then Sparrows Point. Sparrows Point, I thought maybe I'd be okay because it's not part of like the big port complex. But um, I don't know if they're part of that union or not, but they're not loading anyway. I guess either they are part of the same union or they're striking in solidarity with them. I, I don't know the details. Either way, the port strike is on and there's no freight going in, there's no freight going out. So there you go. That's worse than the bridge falling down. Now you can't even get a truck loaded or unloaded now. It is what it is. I guess the feeder mixer will wait for me. <laughs> I ain't waiting for it. So we did head it all the way back here. I had left I had left Connecticut and made as far as Youngstown, Ohio. I stopped there for the night. I slept late. Gave them the opportunity to maybe find a little piece of something coming out of Ohio up here. My frame for my Ford ain't quite ready yet. It's close, real close. I'm like, well, that ain't gonna work. Called dispatch, like, hey, what we got? Like, man, we got this local load here, and we got two big outbounds for you. I got hiccups. So I called dispatch, and I'm like, hey, what do you got? They're like, well, we got this local load here for you, along with two big outbounds. You can choose either one. I'm like, all right, see you tomorrow. So I told them I'd be here. Here we are. Around a couple twisty turns right here, and we'll be there. Nice and easy. You know, and it's typical in the trucking industry today that we're always like negative on the union guys. And if you look at what the longshoremen were making, I, I did a little bit of look up. We were talking on a Steve Summers overnight drive on the radio, you know, the overnight radio show for truckers. We're talking about that and the longshoremen really weren't making a lot of money. I mean, clear with a lot of overtime, they could pull in some piece of money, but you know, their current contract had just expired. Well, they don't have a current contract, it expired. But the last contract was written out in 2018. So if you were sitting in 2018 and I told you what the future was for the next six years, you'd have thought I was insane. <laughs> who, who would have believed that a, that a global sickness would have come over, inflation would be as high as like 9%, you know, fuel would be five, sometimes six bucks a gallon, you know, Gro you know, groceries would be like ridiculously expensive. You would never have believed it. So the money they were making was based on 2018 numbers in a 2024 world. That ain't gonna cut it, I'm sorry. So inflation absolutely ate their lunch, literally. So now they're like, we need more money. I mean, that's just the way it is. We need more money, that's that. Well, the port operations, I'm sure they raise their rates. The steamship companies, I'm sure they raise their rates. The longshoremen, I'm not saying they were making piss, but I'm saying they weren't making what they were making and they want more money. I right? can't say I blame them because when my fuel price went up, you think I just ate it? No. It's called fuel surcharge and the pay is for it because I'm not going to eat it. Someone else is. Or at least a major portion of it. So I'm not down on them about it. What I don't like is the fact that it's one union for every East Coast port. So one union can literally cripple a nation. Granted, I also believe in American things being built by Americans, like the place we're at right now. So I'm all for costs being raised for companies that build stuff overseas that bring them here to, to the United States. Harley-Davidson's building a plant in Taiwan. No, Thailand, Thailand. Harley-Davidson's building a plant in Thailand because Thailand puts tariffs on motorcycles imported. They used to be banned. 
So Harley wants them to do business in Thailand, so they gotta build a factory in Thailand in order to have a market in Thailand. Well, don't that sound familiar? Meanwhile, your motorcycle is gonna be made in Thailand because we'll import it here for nothing? What happens to the American workers? I guess we get shafted, imagine that. Well, that ain't good. So anything that in increases the cost for goods being brought from overseas, I'm cool with. See, so whether it's tariffs, paying the port workers, either one, don't matter to me. I'd rather these guys that work here have jobs than import this stuff from overseas. That's just the way I look at it. The other thing they don't like is automation. And they're worried about automation taking their jobs too. Oh, I could get that. Look at the truck I drive. Because of all the nannies and all the electronics and the problems. Let's look at the trucks. The automation, it's in the trucks. And they're trying to put self-driving trucks out there and all that nonsense. Man, that just isn't any good. So while it affects me, it affects us all. And it will affect us all if it doesn't end reasonably soon. I am concerned at the fact that the United States national security, its ability to get goods and services can be completely crippled by one strike. That's probably not smart thinking by somebody. However, from the other side of it, I am an American with an American job and I'd like to keep it. Um, I, I get where they're coming from, I really do. So I'm not against this. There's some of me that is, but a lot of me that's not. So I understand both sides of that. So I'm, my attitude is, is kind of like just I'm pretty neutral and cool with it because I get it from both angles. I, I truly do. I, from what I've seen on the news, granted, I don't believe everything I see because even on a right-leaning news media, they were talking. They had a tech guy, you know, those computer whiz guys talking. He was saying, yeah, over in Europe, the, your, the uh, European automated ports, they have more workers now than they did before they went automated. Now, that makes no sense. That's just straight propaganda and lies and bullshit. Because look at the, like, you go to McDonald's, there's a kiosk now rather than a person. They got rid of the cashier. The cashier is replaced by the automatic kiosk. Now, I won't do the kiosks. I don't work there. You do. So I'm not going to, I don't do self-service checkout lines. I don't do the kiosk. I don't work there, okay? I'm not giving them my labor and paying ridiculously high prices for freaking burgers that are probably made out of horse meat. Point is, that kiosk got rid of a cashier. That kiosk replaced the cashier. And whether the cashier didn't want to come to work or didn't want to work for that kind of money, the kiosk replaced the cashier. The automated ports replaced the longshoremen. They don't want that. And I don't care what that tech whiz guy says on the on the news media. Automation replaces workers. That's it. We know this. Well, piss on me and tell me it's raining. All right, let me go check in real quick. Start breaking the trailer down to figure out what unit we're getting.
very different truck from what we normally do. It's got all this equipment because it's a high rail piece. It's a piece of high rail equipment for a railroad. This one CP rail, Canadian Pacific in the United States. Anyway. So we can't grab through here. On this side I can, but on that side I can't. So my idea was grab outside of the spring stack and across the chains. Each side has a drag link. One side and then the other. Interesting suspension on this thing. It's half train, half truck, so it's a little different. But the truck parts still remain the same. There's enough room for the hook to clear through the chain and rest in there and not rub on the drag link. Of course, it still has a center link. Or maybe it only has a drag link on this side. I forget. Either way, how we wrap the damn axle with these big thick chains is another whole job in and of itself. So we're not touching the drag link. Now we're right up against the spray stack. Like so. That's good. Alright, so we're not rubbing on equipment that is railroad related. So we're good to go there. So yeah, we're just gonna do it slightly different in the front end than we do the uh, the normal trucks on the other side though we're uh, on the back we're gonna grab the uh, tow hooks on the back of the frame that like and subscribe everybody let's go truck and railroad niche
everybody. Now the basic plan is we're gonna run 23 to, I guess it dead ends at 82 or 83 or something like that. We're gonna wind up in Mauston, Wisconsin off 90 and 90, uh, 39 and, what is it, 90, yeah, 90, 94. I think 39 already branches off by then. But anyway, we're gonna go through there up in Atoma and then gotta get on up the line from there. Get, planning on getting fuel at the quick trip in Mauston. I don't want to double back to the one here in Fond du Lac. I mean, I can, but it's like 80 miles or so to Boston, so we'll get there, get fuel. And it should be good to go. Otherwise, we go down a little south of here, back to where we started this morning at that quick trip. We'll just bounce down to 151, which is highway, and we then we'll take State Route 33 across the state. That's a little further south. It might add a couple of miles. 23 ain't bad running. It's not a highway, but if we go the other way, it ain't a lot of highway either. So, 601, half a dozen, another. I don't think it makes much difference. I didn't make the mistake though. I came close. I don't usually go this way. Talked to dispatch earlier. We're going to go, instead of Provo, Utah, we're going to Buffalo, New York. So we load that tomorrow. That'll be a nice little one. Deliver Tuesday. Provo and New York. They both deliver on Tuesday, so I'd be stuck with them anyway. Which is fine, because that way Buffalo, I could leave out Monday and be there Tuesday. It's only 700 miles. 
so I could leave Monday morning and have no trouble getting there. So that'll give me two days off. Good opportunity to get some crap done at the shop. like this I wish I had uh, Elaine running with a driver you know because that way I could figure out amongst me and my driver who's going to Provo and who's going to New York depends on how it falls in the system I guess but man it just it sucks I had a deadhead home, but yet, as soon as we got back, we had stuff to do. We just load a local load, and then, like I said, load up for uh, uh, Buffalo. That works out good. But that's why I bought Elaine, so we can work on getting that kind of stuff going. ripples. The trailer starts undulating. It starts bouncing the truck and then my foot bounces on the throttle. So you're either full throttle or no throttle. Or if you're trying to tickle the throttle, it's just our wop 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 wop. It just gets old. <laughs> 